anybody who wants to go into politics, they're all fucking puppets, okay? <laughs> there are 150, and they're all men, that run the world, period, full stop. They control most of the important assets. They control the money flows. And these are not the tech entrepreneurs. Now, they, they are going to get rolled over over the next five to 10 years by the people that are really underneath pulling the strings. And when you get behind the curtain and see how that world works, what you realize is it is unfairly set up for them and their progeny. Now, I'm not gonna say that that's something that we can rip apart, but first order of business is I wanna break through and be at that table. That's the first order of business. And the way that I do that is by proving that I can do what they do as well as they do it. And then do it better than how they do it. Because at the end of the day, they are commercial fucking animals. Okay? And they'll open the door out of curiosity and they'll let me stay because I, because I add value. And then once I'm there, I can open the door for other people who can try to do the same thing. So my entire goal now is that, is to be in a position to aggregate enough of the capital of the world to then reallocate it against my worldview. And I'm not saying my worldview is the best or right, but it is mine. And at the end of the day, there are 150 other fucking guys with their worldview, and they don't give a shit what you think about their fucking worldview. That's the truth. And so why not me? Why not? Why not one of you? Why not? And so in my life now, I'm just kind of like, why not? Why the fuck not? <laughs> Can you tell us a little, so you have these 50 year goals for social capital, yeah. three of them. Yeah. Can you ex give us your worldview in, through those goals? Um, so my 2045 ambition for the organization, this is as I see it right now, 2045, is I would like us to employ at least 10 million people through the businesses that we own. Um, I would like our businesses to positively affect at least a quarter of the world's population. And I would like us to have made cumulatively about a trillion dollars. That's my 2045 ambition. I think if we do that, we are the modern face of capitalism for the next 50 years. So how we do that now becomes really important. So if you think about building businesses in today that could do any of those three things, you have to be technological. You absolutely just have to be. You are not going to build a brick and mortar business that gets anywhere close to those three things, number one. Number two is you have to think very broadly about building things that can stand the test of time. Those businesses are by definition hard and non-obvious. And so they compound in scale very slowly. And that's really counterintuitive to the overriding logic of Silicon Valley, which says quick, fast, go, right? But that kind of premature ejaculation doesn't work if you're trying to fucking be around forever. Like, you got to be in the flow for decades. That is hard. It tests people's patience. It tests people's resolve. It tests people's really intellectual incision. And this is where everybody gives up. Everybody gives up. I had this moment today, just a total uh, different way of describing this. Um, through the Warriors, I've met a lot of players, obviously. One of them who I've become unbelievably close to is David Lee. David Lee just got engaged to uh, this unbelievable woman, Caroline Wozniacki, tennis player. Anyways, we're, we were working out this morning, okay? <laughs> Couples workout, me and my wife, him and, his, him and his fiance. So we're doing this thing, this treadmill thing, which my trainer would, concocted. And I'm in, I'm, in, I'm in pretty good shape. And then you see what it really means to be extremely dedicated, in their case, to something which is physical fitness because they're professional athletes. When I give up, right, when the average human gives up, their brain goes into fucking overdrive, okay? And they're like, there's this next level burst. And so like, it's, it's that. Yeah. It's like when, when things get hard, can you double down? A different example, we had yesterday we do these things every quarter called quarterly portfolio reviews, where incredibly intensive review of our entire portfolio, revisiting our strategy, talking about all the things we're doing to make sure we're on the right track. And I had this observation, which was um, I started a diabetes business. My dad died of diabetes three years ago. 
most of my relatives have it. I express the gene that makes me uh, disproportionately susceptible to it. So it's something that I personally care about. But that business took seven years to get to a place where we even have a chance of being viable. And I think to myself, in that example, I embodied a bit of Caroline Wozniacki. When things got hard, I pushed through the pain. Now, in my case, the pain was the fear of failure, continuing to write more money, a belief that I had that this business was going to work. And today, that business manages a million diabetics. And I think there is some kid out there whose family will be slightly less dysfunctional because their parents' disease is better managed. It's not going to go to a place where like, you know, they're getting dialyzed or you know, they're on an organ registry. And that value for that kid in our world and all of you that benefits will never be connected the dots, but that's OK. But it required just resilience. Uh, and I'm proud of that. Yeah. And so I want to bring back a little bit of that here so that it's not quick, fast, 5 million users, 10 million now, flip it, sell it, create, celebrate. It's like, hey, let's work on some hard shit together. Let's like buckle down and look each other in the eye and say, we're going to support each other here. This is going to take seven or eight years. But if it works, it will really mean something. And it's something that matters to you for something that's other than just simple motivation of the social capital you get from your friends or money in the short term and winning bigger, longer term. Um, we're missing that, and I think like part of our success will be if we can stay focused on that. Our education portfolio is another thing. It literally looked like a train wreck for three years where everybody has always said, you never invest in education. And my thing was, it's not about education. This is about human capital development. It's about, for every one of you who's so smart that got into Stanford, think of all the people who could be as capable. I'm not asking you to empathize with them. But I, as a capitalist, want a starting line where all of those people can run a race so that I can pick the winner. No offense to any of you here. <laughs> and it took us three years where now those building blocks exist. And I'm like, wow, how many times did I have to look at my partners and say, no, the easy answer is to walk away. The hard answer is to double down. We have to support this business. That culture is missing here. So part of what we're trying to do to achieve those goals is like take really big, audacious points of view on the world, and then train ourselves to be patient. 